Sometimes I read gaming news stories and I'm like, what the f Actually, that happens a lot. But this one about Skull and Bones in particular got me because I actually played this game. Back at E3 2017, Ubisoft revealed their new pirate game. It looked a lot like Black Flag, but with multiplayer, like something that would compete with Sea of Thieves. We got this really impressive cinematic trailer that looked promising. And then the game sort of disappeared. It resurfaced a year later at E3 2018, but it was the same story. We got another cinematic trailer that looked cool, but didn't explain much. Skull and Bones was supposed to come out in 2019. Then it got delayed to 2020. Then it got pushed further out to 2022. The latest estimate for the release date is March 2023. During all this time, we got some reporting about delays, but nothing really concrete. We didn't know what was going on. Not until now. Ethan Gack, or Gatch, probably Gatch, did some reporting that fills in so many gaps, and it's shocking stuff, but at the same time, it's kind of what we expect from Ubisoft. Apparently, this game started development back in 2013 as a multiplayer expansion for Black Flag. If you guys didn't know, I love Black Flag. It's one of my favorites in the entire series, so to know that there could have been some kind of sailing multiplayer component to that game is kind of crazy. That obviously didn't happen. Instead, the project turned into this MMO-like spinoff that was once called, and I kid you not, Black Flag Infinite. That sounds familiar. While the game did look promising, at least for some people, there was some hype around it. It, quote, never actually existed. After four years in development, they still didn't have the core of the experience figured out. This is what threw me because I played the game in 2018. Ubisoft did a hands-on event like they do at every single E3. They invited a bunch of press and YouTubers and media to sit down and yeah, I got to play 30 minutes of this game. I made a whole video about it and even though I left feeling hopeful and kind of excited to see what this would turn into, I still had that feeling in the back of my mind. I was I was asking basic questions like, what really is Skull and Bones? There's a lot of I don't knows and I guess this is what is happening going on in my video, in my commentary. It wasn't clear to me. It's so funny watching this video again because at the very start I'm like, yeah, I, th I think this is a vertical slice. Little did I know, this was the definition of the term. If you don't know, a vertical slice is what devs use to show off their game. They build a projection of what the final thing is supposed to look like, but do it for like a very tiny, small bite-sized portion. And then after the demo, they go back, they fill in the gaps and make whatever changes need to be made. The problem with Skull and Bones though, now as we've learned is there were no concrete plans for the game beyond the demo that I played. Imagine Assassin's Creed Black Flag where you're just sailing around but with absolutely no context. No basis for the world, why you're there, none of that. Developers spend a ton of time making these demos to show off at, you know, shows like E3. But the hope is, for us, but probably for them too, is that the rest of the game, the rest of the concept, is mostly figured out by them. Because if you're gonna show a game, you should have already hammered out exactly what that game will turn out to be, for the most part. I mean, I, I know that game design is an iterative process, but when you have huge projects with massive budgets on the line, you kind of need to know. If you're gonna show a demo publicly, and if you're gonna let people play the game, you should probably have figured that out by then. That just wasn't the case with Skull and Bones. In this report, a few devs that spoke to Ethan, who were not named, compared the situation to BioWare's Anthem. It's a game that looked impressive in demos by most measures, mostly because of really good tech and animations, but the actual game underneath is flawed. It's either not fully formed or has major design issues, maybe some technical problems. I felt that to a smaller degree on Anthem, which is also a game that I happened to play before launch. But looking back at my demo gameplay for Skull and Bones, that's absolutely how I felt. I mean, just look at this complicated wind dial in the bottom right corner. It looks similar to Assassin's Creed Black Flag. We had a similar system there, but the thing is I couldn't actually control my sails. I couldn't control 
control my boat beyond turning and accelerating. I remember thinking there has to be more here. This feels like a concept, like something you might build out to show off to a publisher to get like the green light on an idea, not something that you'd show to the public because you don't actually know what's going on yet. Early on, the plan for Skull and Bones was to really develop and build out the sailing mechanics from Black Flag that everyone loved, but then put that into a multiplayer game. Ubisoft wanted to reuse assets from Black Flag, it saves a lot of time. That would let them develop this game pretty quickly and launch it as a live service experience. But that didn't happen because we learned that whenever they committed to a single idea, they brought it to the creative team at Ubisoft's headquarters and just got shot down. They fired creative directors and shifted directions so often that it became a project where talent just didn't want to work on the game. Skull and Bones went through no less than four major revisions over the course of eight years of development. Most of the concepts for the game were based in the real world, but you also had some crazy ideas. There was one where we were going to be in a fantasy setting, a world called Hyperborea, with branching multiplayer campaigns that lasted weeks at a time. Another one was based on the mythical pirate city Libertalia. The version I played was actually just Rainbow Six Siege, but with boats. In my video, I call the game a class-based ship PVP combat game because that's what it felt like. I chose from three different ship classes and you guys know the drill. They had their own abilities, different archetypes. It felt like a rock, paper, scissors thing where, you know, one ship's abilities would cancel out the other ones and you'd have to, you know, hunt the ones that you were best at killing. There was this very loose narrative mission thing going on about like a rival pirate in the region. And for some reason I needed to collect ivory. And then of course there's a bunch of AI ships floating around that I could also battle. But there was also multiplayer. You could invite friends into your world to sail around with. And I got to see multiplayer, but looking back, we were definitely connected like via local network because it was just a bunch of content creators and press all playing in the same world. Which means by that point, they probably didn't have the full online experience even built out. They didn't need to. So the version of Skull and Bones that I played just three years ago was already canceled. The creative team for that version of the game was overhauled and the new vision for the game was actually a survival game inspired by games like Ark Survival Evolved and Rust. But the the problem was the tech didn't support that kind of experience. I mean, you had things like crafting and inventory management that just weren't working. So they had to build out systems to support basically an entirely new vision for Skull and Bones. And then after building an entire crafting system, Ubisoft reverted the game back to its original vision of being this PVP focused experience, just like it was meant to be as an Assassin's Creed Black Flag multiplayer expansion. It's just mind blowing to think about. You don't have to be a game developer to understand that you can't pivot a project this much. That would be like me rewriting a script for a video about four times and then expecting something good to come out of that. I mean, yeah, I've never done that, like never. As of now, apparently the game is still evolving, but after reading this report, it doesn't look good for Skull and Bones. Ubisoft has already sunk more than $120 million into this project. And since the game is being developed at their Singapore studio, they actually have like a subsidy sort of deal going on with the government there to where they actually expect this game to come out. They're contractually obligated and if they don't, they could get in trouble. I'm sure there's a way to settle this, you know, like out of court, but Man, Skull and Bones is basically a sinking ship that was initially shot down years ago and it's just been sinking the entire time. And I really don't mean to beat a dead horse here, but it's just sad to hear stories like this because I think about all the devs that spent so much time, so much energy on a single project. I can't imagine how frustrating it would be to have executives shift the concept for your game so much that you can't actually make any meaningful progress. This is not the way to make a video game. And at this point, how can anyone be confident that this will turn out well? Like a lot of you guys, I watched Ubisoft reveal their arena PVP shooter X Defiant the other day. And even before we saw gameplay, there were floods of comments about how Ubisoft is gonna mess it up. It's been like this for years, but there's such a mismatch between 
where Ubisoft is heading and the direction that they see for the future of their games and their products as a publisher and what gamers expect. And I know the internet does not represent the average gamer and Ubisoft is making more money than ever. But this X Defiant reveal, the Skull and Bones report, the Assassin's Creed Infinity news, these are all the latest examples of Ubisoft moving in a direction that just doesn't resonate with gamers. And I feel that too. I don't remember the last time I got lost in a Ubisoft experience where I wasn't thinking about things like microtransactions or live service models or sexual misconduct allegations. I'm always rooting for the devs, the people that work on these games day to day that you know, put their blood, sweat, and tears into making something special. I still think that Ubisoft is capable of that or the people that work there. Maybe that's naive of me, but that's where I find myself. But yeah, news like this just sucks. And it shocked me to read about just how bad the situation was surrounding Skull and Bones. That is it for me, guys. I know you might've been expecting the AC Unity in 2021 video. Uh, I saw this story this morning and the video just kind of made itself. My next video should be AC Unity in 2021 in about a week from now, but hey, you never know. Until then, let me know in the comments section below, were you excited for Skull and Bones? Was this ever on your radar? Have you forgotten about it? What do you expect at this point? Fire away, I'm interested to see what you guys think. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please let me know by clicking the like button. Also, go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and ring the bell so you don't miss my next video. Big thanks to all of my YouTube members here on the channel for supporting me and making videos like these possible. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you next time.